Okay. Okay. So, so yesterday you arrived back in the country, and mm. uh, it's been a long journey. Um, I wonder how you feel this evening. Mm, yesterday, as I said, it is exhilarating. Um, it's it's quite refreshing. I'm, I'm still taking it in. Yeah, um, I'm very happy. Four and a half years, you have calculated it actually down to the day, 1,700 and something days. Summarize for us how that has been, the last four and a half years or so. Uh, it's very difficult to come up with uh, appropriate adjectives to describe uh, what I can only call a dreadful, nightmarish, uh, disastrous experience, um, a very uh, base, beastly, inhumane uh, conduct by those who are, have a duty, a positive duty, to protect uh, my rights, your rights, everyone's rights. They have a duty. It's not um, just a responsibility, and it's not just an expectation. They took a Bible, or a Quran, or a religious book, or whatever. They took an oath and swore to uphold the rule of law, to obey and not to subvert the Constitution. They took an oath to protect the dignity and uh, the human rights of all Kenyans without exception. They said, and it is in the Constitution, that torture is prohibited. There is no exception. Yet, and of course, they said, took an oath, not to disobey court orders. They did exactly the opposite. So for the almost five years that I've been locked out of my own country of birth, where distortions, manufactured stories, propaganda, and blatant lies were told by the head of state, uh, the Minister of Interior, uh, cabinet secretaries, permanent or principal secretaries, and very many senior officials of the state. And, 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 that, uh, and just let me finish. Not just that. They were then corrected by not one judge, not two judges, not three judges, not four judges. They were corrected more than 17 times by both the High Court judges and the Court of Appeal. They were told, you are wrong. Miguna is a citizen. Miguna never lost his citizenship. Um, it was wrong to go bomb his house. It was wrong to abduct him. And I will get to that. All these things. I will get to that because I know you yes. have taken some action, including a court action in, in Canada, and mm. we'll, t we'll discuss that. But I wanted to find out how this happened. Is it uh, a formal request you made to the current government, or were, were they simply obeying the court orders? Because we saw you tweet a little bit about the red alerts being lifted and, and, and so on. How did it happen? How did what happen? You coming back home? I mean, there were red alerts that were there. Did you formally request for them to be lifted, or they were just so? So, lifted? Joe, if I can remind you uh, uh, that I did not leave Kenya. I think people try conveniently to forget that that I was sleeping just like you normally do in your house, like you will do today, soundly in my house on the second of February, twenty eighteen when the blue opened my doors with the bombs and took me and never released me and never gave me access to anybody until they forced me out of the country. I remember so, that. So, so, so the point is this. When a new administration comes in with all the litany of court orders that have been defied, disobeyed, and the subversion of the Constitution and the rule of life, rights, and with their commitment that they will do something different, it was a duty, just like a duty on Uhuru Kenyatta. So did they just do it or you asked them to do it? No, That's no, what just I'm asking. wait. Yeah, it was a duty 
for them to do so. So no, I did not ask them to do so. They felt that it was their duty to do so because I remember there was an interview the president did with a reporter in, was it New York or Washington, D.C.? Uh, the VOA, yes. Right. It was, um, yeah, the VOA. And uh, he asked, so what would you do with this case? And he said, I would order that he be returned immediately. The only thing is that they didn't buy my air ticket. They ought to have. All right? Uh, but yes, he did not lift the red alerts the same day that he said he would right away. He lifted them last week. But the passport was issued almost immediately. It was a, maybe a, one or two weeks later, but it was almost immediately. And for those who had doubts, just for the sake of them, I carried it. This is a passport. And no, I did not apply for it. I did not fill a form. I did not submit any application. So, so the only thing they asked me to do is to send them a picture, which I did. Two minutes after I sent them the picture, this thing was printed. Two minutes, literally. Two minutes later, I was sent a copy of the, the passport. And three days later, as, as I received you sit here tonight, Do you feel beholden to this government for doing that? I would never be beholden to anybody for obeying a court order and for upholding the Constitution and for acting in accordance with the dictates of the rule of law. Now, now you've and, 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 and you, you know me. Yes. I don't feel beholden to anyone. You, and we'll discuss Even that. if you buy me we'll lunch discuss, today. We'll discuss that because yes. it's been a subject of discussion in the country in the last few days given yeah. some positions you've taken. But mm. you took this matter to, to, to the highest court in Canada. You were suing the in, former interior minister. I don't know his former. You will tell me the legal position, uh, Fred mm. Matiangi mm. and Karanja Kibishu uh, mm. together with the two companies. Um, for I think fifteen million dollars, if I if I saw it correctly, hmm. um, it's more. Are, are you s still pursuing that in Canada, or do you want it to come back now that there's a new administration? How is that going? No, no, Where no. Is it? But, but I think you're mixing things up. When you say in this matter, what matter? Because you know there are so many matters. Okay, there's a statement so, so, of so, claim no, that you made. No, no, no. In, in Canada, I'm a very clear person when I talk about these things. So number one. There is the issue of torture, abduction, all these other things, all right? And which went through the judicial process and was determined by Justice Church and was yes. purportedly appealed to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal threw it out. That settled in the sense that there is a final court order and I'm simply waiting for the check or the checks because they have not paid, okay? They have not paid for the destruction of my house they have not paid for abducting me. They have not paid anything that was ordered. So I want my money, which I am entitled to. Then there are other cases that I commenced, including the malicious prosecution. Mm -hmm. Because you know they took me to court yes. with the charges that could not stand up. When they went to Kajiado, they charged me in an incompetent court. And the magistrate said, go to Nairobi. When they were supposed to take me to Nairobi, they abducted me, destroyed my passport and took me out of the country. That case is still going on. Then there were cases about the red alerts, all right? Now, the one in Canada is a different case. And it was brought precisely because, number one, this gentleman, they were all men, made themselves um, unavailable to be brought to account. Because if you go to court and you get a court order and it is not obeyed, where do you go? Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's number one. Number two, they had defamed me. You know, they continuously said, oh, Miguana is a Canadian, he's not a Kenyan, with no proof. As I said, I was born in Kenya. I have a birth certificate. I have a national ID card. I have a passport. I went to schools in Kenya. I never renounced my citizenship. That was in no doubt. And when they went to court, the judge simply said, show me the proof that he's not a Kenyan. They couldn't produce it. All right? That's, so that's number one. That's defamatory. Then they said, I renounce my Ke Kenyan citizenship. Completely false. Because I never did. And by the way, Canada does not require renunciation. Uh, even if you have citizenship of 100 countries. Okay? 
So that did not happen. But wasn't the argument that the Kenyan constitution of the time required that? No, no, no. But they are not the ones to interpret the constitution. The courts do. And the courts said you are wrong. So you see, here is Matiani, a pedestrian on the street, coming to tell us that a judge of the Court of Appeal, three judges of the Court of Appeal, who have told them they are wrong, are wrong. So where is the case in Canada right now? So the case in Canada uh, was filed, and they have not defended. So they are purporting now to have hired two law firms to bring a motion that they were state officers, and therefore the Canadian courts have no jurisdiction over them. That motion has not been argued, has not been filed, but they have threatened it. And my response is very simple. Number one, these people acted outside the law. The Republic of Kenya did not tell them to do anything because they were supposed to act within the law pursuant to the Constitution. What they did was um, outside the Constitution. Okay, they subverted the Constitution. Number two, they subverted the rule of law. Number three, they disobeyed court orders. Number four, there was no formal instruction or directive unless they can produce one that told them to do all these things against me. So if they want to say they did it on behalf of the Republic, they have to say, where did the Republic or when did the Republic give them permission to do so? Two, there is no immunity against torture. It's in the Constitution. So if somebody sues you for torture, you cannot say I'm immune. Number three, you took yourself outside the jurisdiction of the courts in Kenya by disobeying all the court orders, more than 17 of them. And the last one, defamation can be tried anywhere in the sense that when they say Miguna is this or that, when they say I'm a criminal, or when they say, for example, that I'm a terrorist, which they did several times, when they go and hire two foreign companies to blacklist me uh, internationally, so that I cannot travel to some countries and I cannot transact electronically using uh, Amazon, using PayPal, using many banking instruments. That is something that uh, attacks me in Canada. That is something that they did using a Canadian company and a company operating in Canada. That is something that they did against an individual who they had forced to live in Canada uh, mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. exile. So the Canadian jurisdiction, the courts, have a basis for saying, look, yes, you spoke in Kenya, and you may have instructed or hired these people in Kenya, but the effect of your action was felt right here. Oh, okay, and, and we need to take a short break, and, and, and when we come back, I'll ask you whether you think that... Uh the, the current administration owes you an apology, as some people say, apart from the check that you're waiting for. But still ahead, we discuss politics with Miguna Miguna. Is he going to be a Kenya Kwanzaa ally 